we're talking about the subject of marriage and so I brought today my marriage box and there it is right there and your marriage can be just like this marriage box and let me tell you what is so wonderful about the marriage box I'm gonna open up the marriage box and in this marriage box you know when I was a younger man I remember I've been married what almost 27 years I guess and I remember when I was younger I was thinking about how wonderful it is to be married and here's here's the marriage box you know you can get married and this is the great benefits of marriage intimacy you see that little heart it's got the word written intimacy all you need to do to have intimacy is to get married praise God then you've got you'll have a good friend You'll have a great friend, a good relationship, good friendship. It's all in the marriage box. It's great. You'll have a person that's so forgiving and understanding. It's wonderful to be married. Then you'll always enjoy in marriage the love that you desire and the love that you've been looking for. It's a great thing. Then you, anytime you want affirmation and words of praise and edification, it's right there in marriage, right in the marriage box. And then, you know, it's important to have communication in marriage. I mean, there's no, nothing more important than having a great communication. And in marriage, that's, you can have it all. You can have love talk and you can talk about your affections towards one another. The, the book of Song of Solomon, I think, describes, what is it, 340 words between the husband and wife of how great they are towards one another and words of affirmation and affection. And then you have an understanding mate that you can have freedom to talk and share all your feelings. And they're so understanding. It's really great. And then as you continue in your marriage, you've got this wonderful romance. It's so good. It's so great. And then you have warmth, a kiss, a hug, touching all in marriage and in the marriage box then you have transparency you know you can really be yourself with your mate it's great loyalty you don't have to worry about unfaithfulness you have loyalty and uh, even in deed and thought sexuality a honeymoon that will last till death do you part that's what my wife promised me. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, <laughs> sharing and doing things together. We enjoy doing all those things together. Affection and a listening ear. Somebody said the road to the heart is the ear. And so a listening ear. Oneness in spirit and soul and body. Kindness. All of that's in this marriage box. All of this is in marriage. You know what? If you're single right now and you're watching this little videotape, it's all there waiting for you. And you're going to enjoy this. God's got something really good for you. And it's all right in this, what we call the marriage box. And you can have one of these too. Just get married. Now, the only problem is this. Here's the truth and here's the reality about marriage in the marriage box. Now watch what I'm doing right now. I hope I don't know if you can get this on camera or not. But see, all of these things that I described in marriage, in reality, this is the truth. See? The truth is there's nothing in the marriage box at all. And the truth is this. If you want these things in your marriage, you have to put them in your marriage because they're not automatic. Did you understand what I said? If you want all of these things that I described, love, intimacy, communication, a listening ear, romance, kindness, sharing together, doing things together, a great and wonderful marriage, it has to be put in there. 
because it doesn't automatically come with marriage. I would say it this way. Jesus said it, th well, Jesus said it this way. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, whatever you would want someone to do to you, do ye even so to them. This is the law and the prophets. If you want romance, you have to be romantic. If you want kindness, you're going to have to give kindness. If you want intimacy, you're going to have to be understanding and intimate. If you want warmth, you're going to have to give warmth. If you want communication, you're going to have to communicate. If you want sharing together and doing things together, you're going to have to do those things. Because in reality, there's nothing in that box called marriage. Now, listen to me very closely. Not only is there nothing in that box that you're going to have to, you yourself are going to have to put it in that box as God helps you to do that. What if instead of putting all of those good attributes in your marriage, you put things like this in your marriage? Unloving words. You put going different directions. You put indifference and coldness towards one another. You put failure to communicate with one another. You put unforgiveness in your marriage box. You put no time together. I'm too busy for you. You put no physical warmth, no hugs, no kisses, no touch. You put criti criticism no sexuality. What if you have been putting those things in your marriage box? What if you've been putting those things in your marriage? Well, right now, you know if you've been putting those things in your marriage box. Because if you are, you're saying, God, I thought marriage was supposed to be a good thing. I am miserable. This is miserable. This is terrible. Like I said in last session, in the last session, it's not so much in finding the right person, it's in becoming the right person. And you know what? You can't change them. You can't demand from them. You can't say, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. But you know what? You can change yourself. You can make positive a positive step towards God, towards the Holy Spirit to say, God, show me your principles of love. Show me your principles of marriage. And God, instead of unforgiveness and criticism and bitterness and no warmth and no communication, I want to change because I see that love is kind. God's love is kind. I see that love is understanding. I see that love doesn't seek its own and demand its own way all the time. If you take God's way, God's principle, empowered by the Holy Spirit, you can take a terrible marriage and turn it into a good marriage. Some people say, well, I don't love that person anymore. Love is not a feeling. You can make a decision to love because God has given the manual. Love, according to Titus 2, is something that can be taught. And as you learn the principles of love, you can implement them in your marriage box, your box called marriage, and turn that thing around for the glory of God and for your peace on earth and goodwill towards men. God bless you as you consider these things. God's Word and Jesus Christ has the answer for your marriage today.